greeting to you and blessings from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. It's been a while since I've been on YouTube uh, to record any videos, and um, it's been a busy time for me and for the world, certainly. Um, <clears throat> the Lord uh, has directed me to uh, receive prophetic utterances and um, share them with YouTube as He directs. Um, so over the last period of time, I've received four, I think it's four, no, it's three, a couple visions. Um, in addition to uh, <clears throat> just the general um, parameters of what's going on in the world currently. So I want to start with this first prophetic word. I was told to write it down and told to share it um, here recently. So um, bear with me here. Um, <clears throat> I am preparing my armies as I speak to come to the earth, yet my people remain unready still. My bride continues to remain the harlot in some ways, other ways she is ready. I have chosen you from before the foundation of the world to speak for me in this hour at this time. Will you speak for me? And then I replied, Yes, Lord, I will speak for you. I want to speak for you. Then he says, Sound the alarm, the bridegroom cometh. I am about to come for those of my bride who are not playing the harlot. And he emphasized are not playing the harlot. But who have begun preparing themselves. <clears throat> I am preparing to remove my grace. I am removing my grace from the earth. Then he asked me, do you know what that means? And I responded, I, I think I do, Lord. And then he says, what do you think that means? Or what does that mean? And then I responded, that the bride will be removed, that it will become more difficult for those who remain on the earth to walk for you, talk for you, and to serve you? That was the question. His response, yes. It also means, for the lost, I will become more distant than I am even now to them in their eyes. But I will still continue to reach out to them. This is a time for my anger, for I will again smite the earth and her inhabitants. I created your world, your planet, in wondrous glory, wondrous splendor. Would you like me to show or would you like me to show you? He asked me the question. My response, yes Lord, more than anything, please show me. Then by a vision, he took me to the original paradise, into a meadow, um, and I saw from a distance uh, who I perceived was Adam and Eve in the distance and looked like they were having a little picnic. And um, <clears throat> it was so peaceful, uh, it's nothing like what we have here. And the fragrance and the smells and the aromas in the air were so pleasant, it's difficult to describe. And there was a magenta glow in the sky above us, and we didn't really feel the sun on my skin. You know, Adam and Eve apparently hadn't fallen because they weren't wearing their um, animal skins. So, <clears throat> from a distance, they're a lot larger than us. Um, 15 feet tall, maybe. Um, maybe taller. And Adam uh, was kind of a, a reddish color, uh, as, as is described in the Bible, but he had a Shekinah glory on him. He glowed. So, if you can imagine... Um, perhaps a native-skinned American, or perhaps um, someone else that would have to have, tend to have reddish skin, but yet they glowed, and they glowed kind of a white, and he had dark hair, uh, and he was kind of laying uh, on his side, uh, talking to who I assume was Eve, um, and uh, she was facing him, and she appeared to be, be very tall also, and I, you know, <laughs> well, I can't describe a lot about Eve. I didn't see a, a clear picture of her, but she didn't seem to be wearing her animal skins. Let's put it that way. But she had long, dark raven hair, and she also was glowing with the Shekinah glory, kind of a, she also was a, kind of a reddish skin color, 
and um, she had kind of like a Shekinah glory. And I heard, you know, some birds and some animals, and uh, the air quality was perfect. The humidity, you know, in the air was perfect. Uh, there was no sunlight beating down, of course, no rain at this time. And I was standing in like an open meadow, and of course there was trees, and everything was was more vibrant than here. I mean, everything was more colorful and very peaceful. It's hard to describe, but I don't want to spend the whole video on that. But um, I was very, very blessed to be able to go and, and see that. <coughs> Then he said, after he brought me back, he says, heaven is peaceful. Um, then, uh, like the other, even more so, although there are far more inhabitants in heaven, would you, do you want to see? I said, yes, Lord, I want to see. So, we went to heaven. And heaven... Um, I didn't spend a lot of time there. I know a lot of people have had visions of going to heaven and going to the throne room, and, you know, there's people saying different things. The view I got was I kind of kind of came in like, uh, I guess it would be like an airport sort of thing. You kind of come in, and we were uh, above, we were flying, um, and I kind of stopped kind of like in hover mode, and I assumed it was it was the new Jerusalem or um, the heavenly Jerusalem that I saw from a distance, and it was beyond spectacular with all kinds of spires and all kinds of, uh, speak about a skyline, wow, you know, it, it was just incredibly beautiful. Um, uh, I did see uh, an angel or two kind of coming and going. Um, but I didn't see a lot more. Um, I just sensed, uh, obviously a heavenly presence, um, a, a deep, peaceful place. Again, it was bright and vibrant. There's no sense of evil like there is here on this planet. No sense of dread or no fear of anything at all. You're just totally relaxed. And, um, as I said, kind of in hover mode there. So then we came back. Um, <clears throat> he gave me some personal things. And they, then I asked him, I said, Lord, what message do you want me to share with your people? And his response is, repent, repent, repent. He says, some of my people are preparing properly to greet me, and others are not. Tell those unready to repent, for when I come for my bride, those who are ready shall be taken to be with me forever. Those who aren't will be left behind. Um, harsh words, strong words. Uh, you just want to be in the group that's ready. You don't want to be, he says, after that he says, tell my people they do not want to be left behind. And that's as far as that message of what I can share with you. Um, again, when I, you know, was going to come onto this YouTube channel, I, uh, my intention was not dreams and visions and prophecies and prophetic words. However, <laughs> uh, just like the thing with grace, it's not exactly what... I want, this is the Lord's channel, and he's directing uh, the action, so therefore, uh, we will do it his way. Um, concerning current events, a lot going on, lots of threatenings, lots of rumblings, uh, lots of fear-mongering, um, even among the uh, informed uh, alternative folks that are awake. Uh, there's just information agents out there trying to stir the pot and trying to scare people with the various scenarios of this might happen and that might happen. We saw that last summer as well. You know, they're going to blow up Chicago and they were going to do this and that and the other. 
They're going to blow up the Olympics. They're going to blow up the Super Bowl. So there's a lot of that stuff floating around. Um, one of these days, uh, something catastrophic is going to happen. The prophetic voices uh, are speaking such. They're saying, prepare, get ready, it's coming. Catastrophe is coming. Uh, you know, and, and to repent. And uh, the similar things that I shared with you. Um, I just urge you all to prepare. First of all, spiritually, get right with the Lord. I mean, that's all that matters. All this stuff in the world, who cares, you know? When the Lord comes and we are changed or we ascend or whatever phraseology you, you want to use, this stuff is junk. You know, it stays behind. Uh, if you sell out your job, there's not many jobs in heaven that transfer from this world to the next. In other words, if you you might be, you know, a great a doctor or a surgeon and you're spending, you know, 80 hours a week, you know, doing this, that, and the other, and and uh, working very hard in your uh, what they call healing arts, but it's more now like treating arts, treatment arts. Uh, but, but in the new in heaven, there won't be anybody sick. <laughs> you know, other people, you know, insurance salesmen out there beating the the pavement, working the phones hard, uh, working long hours um, away from his family, perhaps. And there'll be no insurance in heaven. You know, for the bankers, you know, we all know how we feel about them. Uh, there's no mention of bankers uh, being needed in heaven. And you can just go through the list. Uh, most of these jobs are not transferable. But your life and what you do for the Lord is, that's what's important. You know, make your life count for the Lord. And everyone is not some major evangelist or a major teacher or a major personality, let's say. You know, that, oh, everybody's heard of so-and-so. Everybody goes to his thing. You know, well, you know, those guys may be right, they may be wrong. Uh, but what you need to do and what I need to do is get right with the Lord and do what he wants you to do. There may be one person that only you can reach and nobody else can. The great evangelist, the great teacher, the great, grand, as I call him, grand foobah. Can't reach them, but you can. And you're the only you the Lord has. There's no other you that he can work with other than you. You are very important. You are very precious in his sight. And he loves you very, very much. He gave his only begotten son so that you could have life everlasting. And he gave the most expensive gift ever. And your salvation and mine was so precious and so expensive that we couldn't begin to pay for it ourselves. For it is by grace that we're saved, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now once we're saved, we show our appreciation by the transforming of the renewing of our mind and doing what the Lord would have us to do in our lives. Because if you do make him Lord in your life, then the agreement is he's boss, you aren't. So hence you do what he wants you to do you don't do what you want to do. So, with a lot of people, that's a problem. Um, and unfortunately, many people call themselves Christians, and they're out living for the devil every day, and they think they're going to heaven. Well, you know, I, I don't think it's the case. We'll see. But you don't want to find out that I was right, and uh, you were wrong, and you're left behind. You just don't want to be here. So, my time's running out, so I love you guys. God bless you. I have a couple more messages uh, from the Lord to put up here. Uh, and I probably will in the next, you know, day or two try to get them up. So without hearing from me for a while, now all of a sudden you're going to hear a lot from me. So God bless you. I love you. Have a great day.